Welcome back to another episode of 40 Facts About the 40K Universe. I am your host, Gersh1, and you are watching One Mind Syndicate. Today we talk about the Tau Empire, as we get into the specifics of the Tau Firecast. If you are new to the channel, subscribe, because we post Warhammer 40K content every single day. And of course, if you have any requests or suggestions for topic ideas, comment down below. But with that said, let's get into 40 Facts on the Tau Firecast. The Fire Cast is the military cast of the Tau Empire. The Tau of this cast are tall and have relatively strong and more muscular frames than their counterparts in other Tau casts. This distinction was formed by the Fire Cast origins on the plains of Tau, the Tau homeworld, where they were predators and warriors. The Fire Cast are professional soldiers. In some ways, their training regime begins moments after their birth for the great communes are fully given over to raising the best soldiers and nothing else. Discipline, fitness, hard work, and following orders are drilled into the growing warriors. It is customary for teams to be raised and trained together, allowing their troops to form strong connections, a comradeship in arms that will serve them well no matter where in the Tao Empire they are sent off to fight. To be named Shasla, a full-fledged warrior of the fire cast, is to have completed the rigorous training and to have passed the final rite of passage, signifying that one has proven successful at this crucial stage. Those not healthy or bright enough to pass these tests are never heard from again. The Firecast never stops readying for war. Their academies are purpose-built to refine training and to educate their warriors in the way of war. To the Firecast, war is an art form, a discipline to be studied and applied. Ranks within the fire cast are determined by a rite of passage known as a trial by fire, which can be anything from a gladiatorial combat to superior performance in a real battle. The first trial by fire can be undertaken after a Tau warrior of the fire cast has served four Terran years of active combat duty. If the Shasla survives his first trial by fire, he is promoted to the rank of Shaswi, or veteran. For every consecutive four Terran years of service thereafter, the Fire Warrior undergoes another trial by fire. The higher one's rank within the Fire Cast, the more likely one is to be selected and trained to become a Tau Battlesuit pilot. Upon attaining the rank of Shas O, a member of the Tau Fire Cast may be allowed to retire peacefully, although more often than not, he or she will become an advisor to the Tau Military High Command. The Shas are told. Other than death, this is the only way to honorably leave active service in the Tau military cast. Fire cast armed forces are deployed to protect Tau holdings or to destroy those that oppose the Tau Empire's enlightenment. In order to achieve this, they are broken up into distinct unit sizes. The smallest standard unit in the Tau military is known as a team. The most commonly deployed is the Fire Warrior team the backbone of most Tau armies. Each team of fire warriors consists of between 6 and 12 soldiers. All members of a team come from the same sept and most likely have gone through Firecast Academy together. All teams have a team leader, although he can only earn the high rank of Shasui after extensive battlefield experience. Teams that serve together in the field often bond themselves through rituals for which most famous is the Talisara, which roughly translates to a type of communion or binding oath. Those who have sworn such an oath may address each other by their individual names and have vowed to support one another until death. It is not uncommon for teams to progress together as well. Veteran fire warrior teams may even earn promotions to Shasui together. Each might serve for a time as a squad leader for a different fire warrior team before the survivors are reunited as a crisis team. A cadre is a collection of teams joined under a single commander. There are many types of cadres, but by far the most common one is the versatile hunter cadre. It is a combined arms group fielding infantry, battle suits, and gunships together. A cadre is comparable in size and power, if not in composition, to what the Imperial Guards might call a company. 
Hunter cadres are a standing formation, although their exact structure is variable. Subject to change due to the tactical situations on the ground, the quarry they are hunting, the available reinforcement, or the commander's favored mode of attack. The core of most hunter cadres is its fire warriors, but these can be supported in a number of ways. Pathfinders scout ahead and mark prospective targets. Elite battlesuits provide hard-hitting suit teams. Sniper drone teams pick off the foe's greatest threat. And hammerhead gunships use their deadly armaments to blast enemy armor or break up mass infantry attacks. The doctrine of Tau battle tactics is all about the efficient coordination of different groups. From the infantry to the battlesuits, the gunships to the aircraft, all must work as one to defeat the foe. A hunter cadre is fully integrated at the tactical level, so that all teams are considered to be part of the same fighting unit. There are a number of different cadres in addition to the hunter variant, although they tend to be smaller in size and more optimized for individual roles. There are rapid insertion forces made exclusively for fast striking battlesuit teams, infiltration cadres of pathfinders and stealth suit teams, and auxiliary reserve cadres, battle groups made entirely of alien warriors. A particularly formidable group is the Armored Interdiction Cadre, a force composed of hammerheads and sky ray gunships. Its heavy firepower is used to counter enemy tanks and is capable of toppling even the mightiest targets. During the High Fleet Gorgon invasion, Armored Interdiction Cadres blunted the Tyranid Bile Titan Spearhead hitting shoals of hammerheads against towering hierophrants, flanked by tank-sized hyrule duels. A contingent is a group of cadres, normally three to six in number. The most senior commander is designated as the contingent commander, and his own cadre is nominated as the headquarters guard. An ethereal might be present in a force at cadre level, but there is always at least one when a contingent is formed. Ethereals often stay at the headquarter position, as it is a hub for incoming reports, and his counsel can be best received there. Should an ethereal wish a closer observation of the situation, he will attach to or even assume leadership over a cadre. Unlike a cadre, a contingent is not a permanent formation, though efforts are made to preserve contingents that have served efficiently together through prolonged campaigns. Once objectives are achieved, such as the breakthrough of enemy lines or the elimination of a foe, the contingent is dissolved or reformed into another arrangement. Sometimes translated as battle, a commune is a temporary grouping of contingents and the highest level of firecast organization thus far committed in the field. Communes are often formed by contingents from different sets, and although rarely seen before the Damocles Gulf conflict, they are now more regularly formed, most famously during the decade-long campaign against the Orcs known as the Great War of Confederation. Only the combined force of many Seps could have hoped to stop the gargantuan Orc Wall that threatened the Empire. A command is the term used for the forces of a single cast in a given location. For instance, all the fire cast on the world of Nimbosa were part of the Firecast Command Nimbosa, while all Aircast formations were part of the Aircast Command Nimbosa. The four commands are drawn together in a strategic organization referred to as a coalition, and are presided over by a specially assigned ethereal council. Thus, a coalition will consist of all Tau and auxiliary forces on a given world or within a particular system. By far, the two most common forms of hunter cadre tactics used by the Tau are the Montka and the Kayon. Each method is taught in depth by the great firecast academies, and each has its own adherents amongst the masters. Both styles are based on an ancient hunting technique, each representing one of two broad approaches to slaying your quarry. One involves luring the prey to the hunter. The other involves the hunter running the prey to the ground. Although some commanders or seps favor the use of certain teams or weaponry for certain styles, ultimately it is the tactics being used that make the difference. This is a concept that masters of the academy 
all permanent warriors in their days stress to their pupils. Roughly translated, the killing blow, the most aggressive style of Tao warfare, the Mont Ka tenet is all about the art of identifying a target of opportunity and attacking it swiftly with a hunter cadre. There are many famous variants of the Mont Ka, with most revolving around rapid strikes with a mobile force and taking the fight directly to the foe. The theory behind it is that landing a swift and decisive blow to the vitals of the enemy will eventually win the fight. Common to all methods of Tao warfare, Mont Ka places a strong emphasis on targeting prioritization and concentration of fire, attacking the right foe at the right time with an overwhelming application of force. Attacking too soon will cause the assault to lose impetus, while attacking too late will hand the foe the initiative. A cadre pursuing the Mont Ka may stand in readiness for several days awaiting the command to strike. During this time, they will review the plans, choreographing the moves they will perform when the call to strike comes, charting out the nuances of targets, terrain, and timings. Often, the attack will be delivered in a variety of stages, with elements of the assault arriving in different manners and quite often from separate directions. The coordination of such event is pre-planned, although naturally, there are ranges of contingencies and adjustments that can modify the plan in response to a variable of battle. The final decision to launch a Mont Ka comes from one who has a good view of the foe, often a Pathfinder team that has worked its way forward into enemy territory. There is a great bond of trust between the cadre that conducts the Mont Ka and the commander who orders it, and a well-honed attack will bring great honor to both. The attack will be called off immediately if the prey remains resilient or proves especially troublesome or evasive. Escalation or grinding battles are not the way of the Mont Ka, and rather than entering into a fight of attrition, the Tao find it far preferable to pull back out of range and begin planning for another strike. The Kayon art of war is the oldest of the Tao techniques, and the words for hunter and patient are both derived from the same root. This style of combat relies on the interaction of the hunter and the lore. The lore can almost be anything, most likely a friendly unit deployed in an intervening position upon the battlefield, or perhaps an objective known to be vital to the foe. Using wisdom and foresight, the patient hunter will anticipate the enemy's path and deploy in the most advantageous manner to attack them. For example, a cadre practicing Kayun might set up an attack along a known enemy advantageous manner to attack them, placing a team far forward to inflict some initial damage before falling back. As the friendly troops withdraw, they are sure to be followed by a vengeful foe. How best to attack the advancement is where the art of the Kayun comes into play. True masters of the ambush attack have so many layers of plans within plans, that only at the end do their opponents come close to realizing that all of their actions have been anticipated, even orchestrated to achieve the attacker's end result. Many a foe have been drawn in by the spiderweb plans of the Kayon, lured by initial weak spots left on the Tao battle lines or induced into a killing zone by teams of reigning retreat. There are many subtleties to the Tao ambush strategy, with canny commanders using multiple distractions to split the foe's forces, or actively moving their lures in order to spread the enemy out, leaving them vulnerable to impending attack. And those were 40 facts on the Tao Firecast. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like you see, the fire cast uses tactics that are very similar to the ones that we would see in today's time. Uh, they're not like the Imperial Guard that just send their men to die, basically going into wars of attrition. That would not happen in today's time. Nobody wants to waste men just 
because um, so yeah this the the Tau Firecast utilizes uh, very human like techniques of today's time. If you did enjoy this video, please share this with your friends on Facebook or Twitter. Uh, it really helps out the channel if you spread the word. And, of course, it gets people inspired to play Warhammer 40k. Uh, I, while I was reading the lore, I know about the Mount Ka because uh, the Sound Alchemist talks about it. Um, but I was trying to figure out if there was a way for me to implement that tactic into my um, uh, armies. So I have Skatari and I have Orcs. Um, I can definitely implement the Cayune in, in, um, while playing orcs because, you know, orcs can ambush uh, any type of uh, unit that kind of tries to take advantage of a weak unit or something like that. So I'm definitely going to try to use these tactics in my armies. Uh, let me know if you guys have done that before in the past and has it worked for you? Comment down below. I know the actual 40k game is a lot different than... Uh, you know, what we hear in the lore, but of course I would like to know if you guys use any specific tactics that um, are similar to the ones in the lore. Uh, and again guys, thank you for liking, commenting, and sharing. If you want to support the channel a little bit more, jump on over to Patreon. A simple dollar a month helps us create more videos. If you can't, we understand. Simply by liking, commenting, and sharing, it helps us out. With that said, I'll see you tomorrow. This was Gershwin with One Mind Syndicate, signing out. Oh,